My dad was also Gordon Gilbert. I'm a junior. My dad passed away this summer at the age of 98 after living a good long life. Dad was the son of a tenant farmer born in Western New York in 1918, the first of his family to go to college. After high school in Rochester, he attended college in Hannibal, Missouri, Mark Twain country, yeah. wow. where he was ordained as a Baptist minister at the age of 18 preaching in rotation at four country churches, and the first time he preached, he forgot to take the collection that would have been his pay. He met my mom there in Hannibal. They both got their degrees, got married, and then got their divinity degrees at Colgate Rochester Divinity School back in New York. Before going to China as missionaries with my older sister and me in 1946, only to be evacuated in 1948 when the communists took over. My dad's beliefs led him to support peace and justice in his ministry. He was active in the civil rights movement in the 60s, and the peace movement during the Vietnam War was against apartheid in South Africa in the 1980s and protested the U.S.'s military aggression in Central America, going with a Baptist peace delegation to Nicaragua. Dad was a prolific writer, published three books of religious poetry. In the face of death, he was serene in his faith that another life awaited him after this one. Well, that was the obituary, but now I want to tell you what my dad was like to those who knew and loved him. My dad loved working with kids, not just his own. Many children came to know him as Jimosa, his Chinese name, when he was the director of summer church camps in New Hampshire and New York. He would tell wonderful ghost stories while all the kids would sit around a campfire in the dark. His favorite was the man with the golden arm. Dad also did great barnyard animal impersonations and delighted in singing camp songs and church songs, even teaching kids how to sing Jesus Loves Me in Chinese. Dad was a loving father, easygoing, not authoritarian. Mom was more strict. Dad always backed mom up, officially that is, but he would go easy on us, easy on us when he could. When we were little, it was Dad who usually tucked us in at night, sometimes cuddling with us for a few moments before the lights went out and he said good night. He always managed to get a good back rub out of it. Dad was a good husband and provider, supplementing the small income of a minister with an abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables from his gardens. He also loved his flowers and wherever we lived, Dad created beautiful landscapes. Dad loved to play games with all of his children, and later the grandchildren. Not that Dad would ever let anyone win. He was much too competitive to do that. Most of us know how much glee he showed when he beat you in a game, his little victory dance. Some of us might even claim he cheated from time to time, but it was all in fun. Dad loved the out of doors and he instilled that love in all of us kids. He especially loved fishing and nobody took that to heart more than my brother Bob. In Jamestown where he lives, he has a well-deserved reputation as an outstanding sportsman. And when my dad was in his 80s, my brother Bob and I started taking him steelhead fishing with us in early November, just after his birthday. I'd pick him up in Canandaigua where he lived and we would drive to Jamestown together where we'd stay with Bob and fish for the large rainbow trout called steelhead. The last trip was on the occasion of Dad's 90th birthday. My brother John flew in from Italy and my sister Lori's son Jamin flew in from the west coast to join us. Dad said it was his best fishing trip ever. He claimed he caught and released 50 steelhead but that may have been a slight exaggeration. We fishermen <laughs> tend to do that. That did turn out to be Dad's last steelhead trip. After that, he was never strong enough to do another. He also wanted to fish for striped bass up in Maine one last time this summer, but it was not meant to be. I want to leave all of you 
With one last anecdote about my dad, it is somehow fitting and sort of sums things up. At the nursing home, the hospice care person told us a little bit about what to expect in someone's last days. Sometimes, she said, they may stare at a place on the ceiling and even point to it, seeing something we can't see. And if you ask them, depending on whether they may be religious or not, they may say they see an angel, or perhaps one of the already departed with whom they hope to be soon reunited. Linda, my dad's second wife, told us that one day when we were not there, dad pointed at the ceiling and she asked him what he saw. What did you see there? Dad said, a big fish. <laughs> that was my dad.